live. Today we are talking about fulfillment in your branding. Do you struggle with not feeling fulfilled in your branding? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. Well, we are here ready to have a great time today. We want to remind you that you are part of this conversation. So leave comments and we will try to join you in on this fabulous conversation. But before we go any further, let's meet our co-host. So let's start with you, Andrea. How does understanding your brand give you a sense of fulfillment? Well, I uh, think, well, like, or I know actually that when you understand your brand, I mean, and, you know, God knows all three of us are business women and we've been busy telling people about ourselves and what we do and how we help. So when I think of it as, that sense of fulfillment comes when you know that your branding or the messaging you're bringing out into the world is in alignment with what you're called to do. And I think it's um, a big journey for every entrepreneur to put that alignment together, to, to really know uh, how they're showing up internally to themselves is also being expressed externally out into to the people that are, you know, going to utilize their services. Yeah. Absolutely. That was really good. All right, Yo, you are on the hot seat now. How <laughs> does understanding your brand help give you a sense of fulfillment? Well, like just to extend what Andrea said, um, that internal work is internally done by in, within us. So we are our brand. Or I am my brand. So when I understand who I am, it helps me understand what fulfills me. Um, cause you know, like, like she said, you know, we tell people what we do and how we serve, but all of that is who we are. Uh, me understanding who I am and what I want and what I want to project as I brand myself. If it's not fulfilling me, then maybe it's a red flag to redirect how I do it. So because it's a part of, because I am me, I'm my brand. How do I feel fulfilled when I do things? That's why it's important to me. Absolutely. I think that um, that's exactly exactly how I feel about this. When I when I um, thought about the question, I was like, um, I used to always say, you know, introduce myself as I am a photographer. That's what I do. That's who I am. And I remember over the years, a lot of people kind of came at me like you shouldn't identify with your career like you should be a separate entity from that. But I mean, isn't that kind of the cool part of being an entrepreneur is the thing that you're passionate about, you can actually do and make money at. So I am a photographer. That's what I do. And that's who I am. And I don't have to feel guilty about that because I'm true to that. In other words, um, I don't do things that um, like we all have to do things that we don't like as far as the business part of things, but I don't have to work with people or take jobs that are against my beliefs or against my values. Um, I don't have a boss over me. Um, I get to make the statement in my brand, what I stand for and who I want to work with and how I want to help the world and be a statement in my own world. And I think for me, once I realized that and stopped trying to please the world and stopped trying to please everybody and kind of decided that I was going to be true to myself, then I started to feel more fulfilled in what I was doing and, you know, in, in how I was branding myself. What Peggy said. That was beautiful. That was it. That's what I was trying to say, Peggy. You just said it differently. No, it's exactly what you were trying to say. Like, it's exactly what you said. Because when you started saying it, I was like, Man, You said it so much better, saying. though. <laughs> you said it better. You think that beginning is trash and that's just right. I, I just yes ended what you said. It's yeah. exactly what happened. I just yes ended. And I yes ended, Andrew. Yes and. <laughs> Internal work and. 
No. So, um, in case you guys are wondering, we're also going to start our own improv um, company, <laughs> the three of us, because we are so good at yes handing each other always. <laughs> we'll be doing live shows. No, I'm kidding. Okay. <laughs> so, let's um, get motivated. Let's talk. Let's, yo, we're going to put you up first. All right. And your question, your motivation question is, how does understanding your branding help give you a feeling of fulfillment? Uh, just a continuation of what I said. Understanding myself, because I am my brand. The more I know about me, the more I know what serves me and what doesn't serve me. So when it comes to being fulfilled, every, if I make a choice, if it's uh, action I need to take or um, or, so a resource I want to tap into, if it's not resonating with my spirit, if it doesn't give me that, yeah, this is the thing to do, this, this is the moment to take, then it's not fulfilling me. And if I don't understand what does fulfill me, I might make choices that will not serve me properly. So it's all about that, knowing who I am, understanding who I am, and attaching that to how I brand myself so I can hence get that fulfillment. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right. Andrea, are you ready for this? Uh, I think so. I, I want to see the question. How does your understanding of brand help you fulfill it? You know, I um, pondered this a lot in the prep for the for this um, session here in Mink Life Land. And I really wanted to echo something you said about how your brand's an extension of you and that's how you're going to show up and serve clients. I think the fulfillment to add to that and that <laughs> to add to that, I, I'm going to say that, yeah, we start a business because there's some problem we want to solve because we know that there are these people that are probably either experiencing the problem that you had and you figured out a solution and it had great success and you're you're like I aced it or you know I nailed it I you you have a sense of completion because you succeeded right and so I've been really on this kick not kick but a big part of my my own brand is like helping people thrive because we all have been in a place where sometimes you weren't thriving right and thriving has a different meaning for everybody sitting here in this room in this space probably listening out in listener land and when we but we feel we know it when we feel it when we're not thriving right we, we we totally get oh my god something's not right or things are not going well and so i know in the cultivation of, of my own particular brand it was like how do i answer this call for people right i because i remember so deeply um my own frustrations and my own uh, setbacks and disappointments that it inspired the whole evolution of the business, what I do, how I help people. And that's where I kind of heard the call. Uh, you know, Monica always says, you heard the call and you responded. And so I think that real sense of fulfillment, like Yo said, is like you feel inside of yourself that um, you've answered the call or you're answering this calling that you have to do, then that fulfillment lines up, like you satisfy your own needs so you can satisfy others. And so that's a really deep sense of fulfillment as for us as people. And I think that is my, I don't think, I, that is the sentiment I feel when I think about answering that question. So there, that part. Awesome, awesome. So um, I let me, uns so, I was like, wait, that sounds an awful lot like the first question. What did I do wrong? Well, because I'm the one that put the questions in, I think I um, double questioned you. So I was like, well, I, know. I was like, what is going on here? Why is it important to set expectations okay. for your brand is was really it? the question we wanted to ask. So Why I think we... Expectation? Okay, okay, good. I was like, well, this is... Very similar to the last yeah, one. Yeah, we're just, we're just, we're just, yes, just, and ourselves. And I'll just add a little bit more to what I was yeah. saying. Yeah, it does. Yes, it and the more similar to me as well. So, but why um, is it boundary? And then I'm going to okay. let you guys add to this. Why is it important to set expectations for your brand? 
And um, the reason I feel it's important that we set realistic expectations, I'm going to just throw in the word realistic, is because I think um, we all want to change the world, right? We're all like, let's take over the world and change the world. But if we think about what can we change, can we reach one person that's going to in turn reach one person or five people. Now, yo, you were in education for years. So I know that you have to understand that probably more than the rest of us, because you reach that one kid that goes out and reaches, you know, thousands of people. And really, if we're true to ourselves and our brand, and we are doing what we know is right, um, then we can set an expectation of, completing our goals for that day and knowing that because we did our little part also it's going to add you know to the to the next step into the next step so yo i'm going to give it to you with this question now why is it important to set expectations in your brand oh i love what you said peggy because i mean when we realize too the brand it might start with me and, and it and it you know ends with me of course but all that in between affects other people so um if i limit my expectations to just what satisfies me i might be short changing somebody else's opportunity to get the most from me so if i can when i expand myself and say it's not just about me you know what do i expect from this overall dream that i put out there like like you said when i got to the point with my 20 year teaching career i said if i just reach one kid per class period just one <laughs> per class period. There's eight kids a year. There's eight families. There's eight companies that get whatever they whatever they get out to do to change the world. I was a part of that. I told my students I was one twelfth of your success. I taught you for one year. So when I realized that it was more than just me, it it changed what I expected of myself. It actually challenged me to do more, um, to to make greater change because I knew it wasn't just about me. That that was really good. All right, Andrea, you have to follow that up now. I know. Why is it important to set expectations for your brand? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I love what both of you said about how your contribution is going to keep on giving into the next generation, this person, that person, and so on and so on, like the Brett Girl commercial. Remember that commercial? Anywho, um, <laughs> I also think setting expectations for your brand is an internal and external proposition internally. So, you know, like, you know, with clarity, what it is that you offer and thereby the people that are receiving this offer know and can, can really make sure that they're tapping into what it is you're offering. Um, it, it's, it's a, <laughs> I want to say not a safety measure, but it is a kind of, you know, people feel secure when they know the expectations and they know um, they know where they're going. Just like as an educator, kids do best when they know the boundaries of where they're going to um, show up and what's expected of them. And there's always chaos when they don't. Right. Like they're like, wait, I don't know where it's going to go. I think it's the same way that journey is the same for our customers too, is the more that they are like, that's what I'm going to get. If I do this process with Andrea or yo or with Peggy, then their, you know, their fulfillment is high. And then you've delivered what they've been looking for. You've actually done it. And so everyone checks off like that happened, that happened, that happened. So that's why I think boundary setting in your brand is so important so that everybody knows how they're contributing to the final product and the final destination. That's really good because we, we've said this before, like everything you do, you should do with intention. And I think that what you said, Andrea, like totally summed that up. Like if I know what to expect when I'm working with you, then I'm going to be able to know when I had a good experience Right. <laughs> because, you know, um, if I expect something totally different than what you're offering, then I may write you a horrible Yelp review and you're like, but this is what I offered them, A, B, C, and I gave them A, B, C, D, and they're still mad because they were over here on a whole different page. So I think what you said, that was super powerful, super powerful. 
All right. Now we are going to stay inspired and we're going to put you back up on the hot seat, Andrea. Oh, good. And <laughs> how does a lack of understanding your brand affect your feelings <laughs> of fulfillment? Which I we just we just keep talking in circles here. You go for it. <laughs> okay. Um I think, well, you know, because the questions have like these nuances, it's probably okay. better to tell a story, right? Like it's, <laughs> I always think it's better to put out the a story. So a lack of understanding your brand. Well, on the surface, there is, if you don't have a deep sense of your brand, it's hard to market. Like you're going to be like, what do I offer? What am I doing? You might, you know, be at cross purposes all the time trying to figure out what should I put out there? And, and, and does this, does this work? <laughs> and so that creates what for you as the proprietor of the business, anxiety and decision and that chicken and the egg kind of conversation that really nothing progresses forward. You're just going around and around in a circle. So I think that's one of the lack of understandings. And of course, then the lack of understanding is a lack of clarity. So I think it's, if you're not secure in what it is that you're offering and you have a lack of understanding, it becomes very difficult for you to get your message out because you're not even maybe convinced of it yourself. So I could go on and on, but I think that's like the germination seed to pass it up to Yo, who I think, absolutely let's go for it yo how does a lack of understanding your branding affect your feeling of fulfillment because we all want to feel fulfilled well yeah and if again if i am my brand and i don't understand myself how am i going to get my fulfillment because fulfillment for me is different than it is for you all um you it's it's it really comes down to knowing who you are and what you want and what you don't want and then again getting out of self, extending it to the people you serve or, you know, who are needing you um, to help guide them in a different direction. But if you don't, if I don't understand that, if I lack that understanding, it's going to affect how I serve and it's not going to be positive. I don't think it would be wishy-washy. It won't be complete and it'll be um, half-assed. So it's just, it comes down to really expanding my true understanding of who I am so I can be the best version of me to get people to be the best versions of them. I think, I feel like I went roundabout, but I noticed what I was trying to say. <laughs> I think you said it perfectly. That was very good. Because you're thinking, you think everything is people do is wonderful. <laughs> I do. I love you guys. Like there is nobody in the new community that can like screw, screw this up. Like I'm like always excited. Um, yay. Excellent. We've got a comment. We have a comment. <laughs> Thank you, Frank. Um, Zachary, Zachary. And it does. Whoa. I don't know. Um, I don't know what we did here. Yay. Okay. So as you can tell, I am producing today and, and moderating. So and, I'm, and doing I'm doing and great. I'm doing great. So I am going to tell you my take on this question. And that is um, in a story. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow in Andrea's footsteps and tell a story. So I am a professional photographer. Now, there's a lot of people that are professional photographers that use cameras as tools, but we have way different jobs. There's paparazzis, there's um, people that do um, stuff for National Geographic, wildlife, um, nature, um, landscapes. There's portrait photographers, there's baby photographers, there's, um, you know, event photographers. And sometimes, you know, one professional photographer will overlap into different areas but they don't always, you know, specialize or find fulfillment in each of those areas. Now, I used to live in Northern Arizona, which is breathtaking. It is the most gorgeous land I feel in America. I love that area. I love the desert. I love Monument Valley, Grand Canyon, Lake Powell, when there used to be water in it. And, you know, that whole area, like, I just love that. And, uh, I have a friend that used to shoot for National Geographic. 
and him and his wife came out to visit. And I was so excited. I was like, you can take um, family picture for me because I never have anybody, you know, to take my picture. And, you know, this amazing photographer that shoots for National Geographic. And, you know, so I was like, Phil, can you can you take our he's like, um, yeah. So he took our family picture and and it was worse than me pushing the timer button and running in like it was horrible. But in the same moment, I live in this beautiful place and I take a picture of the rocks and you look at that picture and you're like, oh, that's nice. But he stands in the same place that I stand in and he takes a picture of those rocks and it brings you to tears. Why? Because we are fulfilled in what we know we're doing. And when we understand and we stay where we're at, I'm fulfilled taking pictures of humans. I love pulling out emotions and showing different things about humans. I, it doesn't fulfill me to take pictures of rocks or butterflies. So when we fully understand that, we are going to be able to do our job, but in the way that it brings us fulfillment. Now, people could say, Peg, you can make tons of money doing stock photos. You should go take pictures of, you know, this and that, which people have said that to me for, for years. But I'm like, that doesn't fulfill me. Um, I want to do something that makes me feel feel um full and happy and and so i think that is the best way that i can explain that that was beautiful that was perfect that what was perfect said. what she said yeah what she said my <laughs> drop for sure i mean i yeah, that was i can't don't you love how stories do that i think stories oh, really does help us be in both places, the receiving end and the other end. And it, it's so true. I, I get, it just, anyway, that was great. I love that. Ah. Now, I asked both of you, right? You, everybody, I, we've all yeah. got this. So we're ready to move on to the next question. Ah, this is so fun. I love hanging out with you too. All right. Who should we ask for help mm. to reach fulfillment? Mm. <laughs> That's like a good general question, isn't it? Hmm. Right? <laughs> okay. Ooh, then, ooh. I'm going to let whoever wants to raise their hand just take off with this. I'm not going to go. I'm going to go. I, 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 this, question is so big. this question is so big, and I want to be in and out quick. So. Me too. I was trying to catch it. True confession, because I'm like, this could go anywhere. That's all right. You gonna say something? I'll pick it back on. Go for it. This, this, this could go anywhere. So <laughs> it could go so many places, and my mind is like, let's pick one. Whatever comes first. So I, I'm gonna tackle like the fulfillment. We've been talking about brand, but let's. I want to talk from the position of fulfillment because it is a big question every day of our lives like how do we live these fulfilled lives and like fulfilled how because the life experience has many parts there's your body part there's your mind part there's your spirit part there's your professional part there's your family part like and we you know what and that's the beauty of mink life we talk about all the parts you got somebody who can talk about all the different parts right so i know this is supposed to be about branding but because i'm a thrive strategist i want to talk about the fulfillment and that fulfillment about really honing yeah. in and getting to the parts and knowing where your parts are harmonized so that you can know that you don't like rock painting pictures you like people pictures or you want to bring health to people in a fun way. I mean, Yo does many things, so I'm not gonna speak for Yo, but like the last thing I think of when I think of Yo is like people moving their bodies so that their bodies will actually go through this transformation to be closer to their physical fulfillment, let's just say, right? Like it's so not necessarily what she does, y'all, but here's that, that's the bottom line. And you know, as a thrive strategist, I want you to have be curious about all the parts and not put yourself into a hole and say, well, I have to do it this way. I'm like, you have to do it your way. 
and you have to find your way and your way is going to be different than Peggy's way, Andrew's way, my way, you know, all of our different ways. And so fulfillment starts with being able to answer those questions, be it about your brand, but really be about what you're going to offer. And just to piggyback out of what Peggy said is what am I going to offer the world in a way that makes me happy? And makes them happy. And I'm really big about helping people create those win, win, win situations. Because you need, you get to be happy. They get to be happy. And when we, that's the first win, second win, the third win is when, then you know what? Because you and I are happy. We collectively add more happiness out there. So then the collective becomes happy. So that is, for me, fulfillment is a win, win, win situation. Because the totality thrives and grows. So that's why I had to be first. I'm done. All right, yo. You follow that. I dare you. I don't want to follow. I'm not going to follow. I'm going to, I'm going to extend. I'm not going to follow. I'm going to extend. Yes, and here's some more. <laughs> what stuck out? Because that was great. Thank you. I like the way you just took that one word. I'm going to take the word hoop. That's what hit me, the hoop. First thing I said to my mind was try the the people you surround yourself by who get you those that's the people you can go to to kind of i guess remind you who you are in case you forget i also went to source whoever source is for you divine creator god who who can you go to is the person who knows you the best right and then also could be yourself a lot of times when i find myself am i not feeling fulfilled am i not like feeling you know joyful whatever or if i'm in some sort of sticky place what would I say to me if somebody else came to me with that same feeling? So I am my who also. So if you want to get down into it, a who and who you could ask, it's almost endless. Because once you know who you are, I'm going back to my story. Once you know who you are and you understand yourself and you know what gets you going and what doesn't, then you get to expand out to, okay, who can I ask? Starting with source the people around me, and then myself. How? Who can I ask about my fulfillment and my fulfilling field? Because nobody knows you better than you. I'm going to yes and that one because that's that's where uh, this is this topic is networking, right? So we're always talking um, to quote the great Andrea Mears and Maps, maps and Mears. And, and Maps and Mears are always my go-to when Andrea is not on with me. But Today, I wanted to focus on not, not just people that mirror us, but actually the physical mirror. Because I think that a lot of times our fulfillment can shift in our perspective. Um, you know, sometimes like I can like step back out of my life and look at my career and look at my life and say, oh my God, this chick has an awesome life. But when I step back into my life, I'm like, I want to have this. I want to make, why haven't I gone this far in my career yet? Why hasn't this happened in my career yet? What's going on here um, in my personal life? All these things. Um, so sometimes I think it's important that we step back and actually remind ourselves, like, what were our goals? Where were we going? And where did we come from? Like, like. How how can you say you're not fulfilled? Do you remember Peggy like five years ago? Do you remember Peggy 10 years ago? Do you remember that person that was just mm. a complete mess that had no idea where she was going? Now she has this map and she's got wonderful people in her life and she's doing all these great things. And so I think sometimes, um, even though we are talking networking, sometimes we need to step back and really look at where we're at and look at how other people see us. Look at us from other people's point of view. Nobody's perfect. I may think, oh my God, Andrea's got everything. She's got her family together, her business together, her life together. But she may not, she may not, that just may be my perception. I don't really know, but we can still like, how do you see us? You know, how, how is that? And, and, and most importantly, Take the time to see ourselves in that good light. 
you know, get rid of that ring light that makes your eyes look funky. Put some good light on your face and look at it and go, oh, yeah, I look good, right? <laughs> Our, my life is good. My career is good. I'm moving forward. I woke up this morning and I took a breath. That was amazing, right? And so I think even though we are talking about networking and it is important to be with other people, this time I'm going to step out of the mink life format and say, Take the time to change your perspective and look at your situation from a different angle. Yes. As the photographer. Yes. <laughs> Framing <laughs> perspective. Yeah, like right. Oh, yeah. Put in focus. Yeah. Frame yeah. It focus. focus. Yeah, lately. <laughs> that was awesome. That was so good. Well, I, absolutely. I mean, I love that every one of us talked on, spoke on, like, no, first look at yourself, but I love the ending part and regard your journey. Like look at your journey as a person, as a parent, as a professional. That was, that was awesome. Yeah. Mm. That was, uh, this is so fun. I know. Ah! Wait a minute. Tell you what. <laughs> okay, guys, you ready to gain some knowledge? I think um, we're going to start with uh, Andrea. No, yo, yo. We're going to we are going to start with yo. Okay, yo. Final thought. <laughs> One final tip. <laughs> um, um, final tip for being proactive, finding fulfillment. Duh! It's to sum of everything I've shared so far. Be yourself. <laughs> Be yourself. Know who you are. Know what you like and what you don't like. Surround yourself around people who will accept you for who you are. Be yourself. That's it. Mic Every day. Mic drop. Exactly. That's why Boom. she had the first. Because she would set the frame. Right? Like, <laughs> we're gonna, she went, here's the frame. Which is the frame. It's like really <laughs> being, being proactive in that uh, finding fulfillment. Is absolutely. I love. I, I was hoping you were going to say that. I was like, "Hey, go make her go first. Make her go first. So yes, be yourself, and be okay with if you step out, right, of the frame of yourself, and you go, you know, I like all of these things, and you're being self-aware, and you're being, you're doing an assessment, right, and you're like, but I really wish I could. That's the proactive part. The thing that's going to propel you into the next step is saying, well, how do I get to that next step? I think it's great once you are living in your skin and loving all the inches and tips and toes and everything of yourself and you're aspiring to more because we all have visions of, I just want to do this. I just want to do that. I wish I could be over here. And that is your next, like Peggy said, I love my maps and mirrors. It's the map to where you'd like to go, the destination, the next destination. So that in that is a is a great deal of energy. And I, I'm really big on this energy that staying still is being still and there's no motion and it's hard to be successful or it's hard to be aspiring if you're still. So then the vision of what it is that you want will actually cause you to be proactive and solve those questions on how do I get there? you can then begin to make the steps or the recipe for what you're going to do. I had to throw in a recipe, right? So you have to throw in a recipe about how to get to where you're going to go. So, and then I'm sure Peggy might add a little bit about. Go ahead. Give me, give me, give me a tip. You laid, you laid out the map so perfectly for us with the whole perspective things. I was like, well, now you can go and focus. So <laughs> showcase. The, if you, if anybody is is around the Mink Life University uh, universe and has gone through any of the conferences or gone through any of the classes that I've taught, you know because I like make it very vocal every time we get to this section that's called our just statement. I'm like, this is my favorite part. I mean, I say this is my favorite part to a couple things, but this is my favorite favorite part. And the reason is, is I feel like sometimes this is where the proactive thing happens. I feel like sometimes we get so busy in trying to be successful and trying to survive and trying to do everything that we forget 
what we really started out to do and what we, what our heart's desire really is. So taking the, taking the time to sit down and say, what do you want in your career? What I just want my career to be whatever. What do you want in your personal life? What do you want in your finances? What are those things that you're actually striving for? And when we proactively just take that time to, it doesn't take long, take, you know, 20 minutes to sit down and write down, think about, oh, that's right. I remember I wanted to blah, blah, blah. This is what I started this journey for. And and that keeps us on that road. It keeps us, we can write a map. We can go, okay, so if I want to reach this, what do I, what's my next step towards getting there? And that is how we are proactively able to get that fulfillment because once we know where we're going, we can start taking steps and every single step is like, yes, I did it. I'm one step closer. I'm one step closer. So don't forget where you're going and use that just statement. I think that is something that's really, really important. I think we nailed this question. I think we're listening. I think we're listening. We just gave you the map. (laughs) We gave it to you. This is one of those, you guys better be replaying this. This is one of those that I, I definitely think we should replay. All right, it is time for announcements. And no, I am not going to sing Monica's announcements. Announcements, announcements, announcements. There you go. So we are going to start with you, Andrea, because your your little thingy is up here first. So tell us what you've got going on in your life. A little thingy, a little thingy, a little thingy. So I... Love today's topic because I spend a lot of time doing just what we talked about, helping people create this map of a juicy, thriving life. And I do it through a program called the Detoxification and Rejuvenation Reset. And I have one starting on August the 11th. And so I had a whole five-day challenge so people could see the frame of thriving from the Thrive Strategy woman herself. And it just concluded, but it is not too late to listen to the replays. And I can get that for you if you begin the process by checking in with me on this bit.ly, at which is, you know, bit.ly thrive underscore 30. And we can set up a chat and I can really sit and decide or talk to you about what thriving means and how my program could maybe help you get on the way to doing that. So August 11th, it's starting. It's an eight-week program, and I would love to help you thrive. And we do it through the detoxification and rejuvenation reset. So that's what's coming up. Yay! Yay. How exciting. All right. Now, I know Yo has exciting stuff going on, too. Everybody's got such cool stuff. If you are in the DFW area, August 28th, I'll be hosting my third Be Yourself brunch. It incorporates social networking, a chance to get to know some other like-minded ladies, reconnect with some, connect with some for the first time, and we're going to have fun. We're going to dig a little deeper into who are you exactly and who do you want to be. Playing a little bingo activity, but Be Yourself brunch, BYOB, not the booze, the brunch. (laughs) I love it. I love it. And your website is Love Your Life. Love Love Your Life. life. You can sign up on there, find out more about me and Love Your Life. Me. I love it. I love it. I love it. Well, I um, would love to sit down and have a 15 minute chat with you and see if I can offer you any help in actually making that map, figuring out how you can use your headshots, your profile picture to be one of the biggest parts of your marketing strategy. Do everything with intention. The very first impression should let people know exactly your intentions and why they should work with you. So give me a call. Um, Go to headshotstrategist.com or headshotsbypeggy.com and book a 15-minute consultation with me and we'll see where it takes us. And now I get to talk about the Mink Life community, which I love talking about. We have so many things going on. We have a private group um, that you can be a part of by going to 
Mink. Wow, Link. That is awesome. Going to the link called Mink Life University. See, I didn't screw up. I just did. Just took me a minute. All right, guys, go to minkliferuniversity.com and check out all the amazing things this community has to offer. And I know you've always heard us talking about our conferences. If you want to be a dynamic speaker at one of our conferences or just get involved and be a, sitting there at the conference, go to nextglobalvirtualconference.com. If you'd like to be a dynamic speaker, fill out that application. If you want to get tickets, there's a way to get tickets there as well. And I know that if you've hung out with us at all, you have heard us talking about the Minkubator. It is the fun workspace where we all hang out, work on our own projects, at the same time help each other. Um, as entrepreneurs, a lot of times we are alone. Um, I am dyslexic, so words are not always my best skill. So if I'm trying to write an email and I want to sound more educated than a second grader, I'm like, hey, could you read this really quick? And somebody's like, oh, yeah, and they fix it. Um, if somebody needs a graphic fix, I'm usually there and boom, I can do that real quick. We all just love helping each other and being a part of this workspace community. So um, check that out. And again, you can go to minkliferuniversity.com and find out all the information about that. And most importantly, um, follow us. Caring, sharing is caring. Share this with people that you know that is going to get a lot out of this topic. And Continue to watch us every single Wednesday morning and every single Thursday afternoon. Tomorrow, um, we are going to have a Boost Your Influence with Colleen, and it is going to be at 2 p.m. Pacific time. So make sure that you come hang out with us. Thanks a lot, guys. And it was so fun hanging out with you.